Do you need a professional looking portrait to post online? Want to take one with this? That looks like it came from one of these. Well today, I'm going to show you how. Let's start of course with your phone. Because the best camera that you have is the one that you have on you. Huh? Get familiar with the camera settings of your phone and use portrait mode if you have it. In your settings on iPhones, change your photos to most compatible. While this is optional, it'll make it easier if you plan on sending those photos to your computer. Also make sure that you have space on your phone to take at least a few photos. Now let's jump to the camera. First, make sure you clean those lenses. It makes a world of difference over a smudgy lens. Phones typically have a front-facing and rear-facing camera. To avoid confusion, let's call the front-facing one the selfie camera and the rear-facing one the main camera. When taking the photo, either have a friend or family member do it for you, or shoot it yourself by holding the phone at arm's length, either with a selfie camera or the main camera in portrait mode. You can also set the camera on its timer mode while on a surface, in a selfie stick, or by using a tripod if you have one. The main camera allows for portrait mode, while the selfie camera generally does not. If your phone does have portrait mode, I would recommend using it even though you can't see yourself while taking the photo. This will require some guesswork, but the result can be worth it. Otherwise, with the right light, you can get pretty great photos with either the selfie cam or the main camera. Let's talk about lighting next. Lighting is perhaps the most important thing to get a good portrait, and there's lots of ways to get good light. Let me show you five lighting scenarios from my least to most favorite. Now unless you have tons of big windows in your home, I'd highly recommend taking your portraits outside. If you can, find a pretty or neutral area around your home, town, or city to use as your backdrop. At number five is my least favorite lighting in portraits. Direct sunlight, or when the sun is directly on the subject's face. You can get this lighting most of the day. It creates harsh shadows and is typically unflattering as a portrait. However, with HDR modes and upgrades to phone models, they can make bad lighting look a lot better. Number four is what's called Rembrandt lighting. It's when a big light source or the sun hits the face at approximately a 45 degree angle. It creates a triangle on your cheek and makes the subject look more like a 3D object being captured. Better versions of this can be attained with an overhead screen or studio lighting. Of course, if you're taking this at your house, improvise. At number three, you can take your portrait on a cloudy day, but make sure it's not a dark stormy cloud, as this can make the picture look a little gloomy. Light clouds and standing near a brighter area for light reflection will make this option look the best. Number two is backlight. This is when the main light source or sun is directly behind the person much easier to obtain in the early or later parts of the day. This is very common for portraits as long as you make sure it's not too bright, too dark, and without glare. You may need to adjust your brightness manually for this one, and if you encounter glare, you can remove it by putting the phone in a shaded spot. Speaking of shade, at number one is my favorite lighting setup. Find a shady spot on a sunny day and take your portrait there. A bonus tip would be to find a brightly lit piece of sidewalk, wall, or street to reflect that bright light on your face while staying in that shady spot. This will make it look like there's a beauty light being used to brighten your face. A viewer's eye typically goes to the brightest spot on the image, so brightening up your face a little is beneficial to portraits. Modeling. While you probably don't consider yourself a model, here are some tips to get a better portrait by positioning and expression. Make sure that when you take a portrait that the camera is around eye level or above. This will prevent an unflattering lower angle, and make sure you wear clothing that you would be fine going to work in. After capturing a few directly into the camera, try taking a few while looking slightly away from the camera. You can pretend you just saw a friend walk by, or think of something funny while looking away to capture a more candid and natural expression. It's important to show our humanity where we can. Editing. Now that you've taken some portraits, let's check them out on your phone. Use the built-in editor to adjust things like saturation, brightness, shadows, warmth, and others. I suggest making very minimal edits to the portraits to keep them looking natural. If you put filters or too much effects on a portrait, it can look fake or unrealistic to a viewer. 
After tweaking the photo slightly, you should have at least one good portrait you'd like to use online. You can post it to LinkedIn or any other social media page to showcase your digital self, as the only thing worse than a bad photo is no photo. Aww. So that covers the basics on how to take a professional looking portrait with your phone. I hope this video has inspired you to go out and take some great portraits, as you never know when the right light or moment will strike. As always, thanks for watching and stay creative.